yeah. now that we've talked about the basic flow, let's talk about the specifics. So capture. So this is how you're going to actually acquire the uh, the information, whether it's video, uh, audio, mixing all of those together. Uh, there's a couple things you want to think about when you do that. So first of all, you want to think about how many sources. So you might have a single camera or even an eyesight that, that you're using, or you might have eight cameras or 10 cameras with different computers and, and 16 sources. And so these are all the things you have to kind of think about uh, as far as how many of these sources that you actually have to manage. And this isn't just video, it's also audio. How many people do, are you going to be recording? These are all things that you have to think about when you think about whether you want to use a software or hardware-based uh, acquisition tool. You also want to think about how stable it needs to be. So uh, sometimes if you're doing a class and you're doing them all the time or you're doing your own thing out of your house, uh, you know, you, you want to make sure that you're not spending too much money on something that you don't need to worry about. Whereas if you're doing it for a large corporate client, oftentimes it's what we would consider, you know, mission critical, which means that you cannot have it fail. This means you're going to have redundant systems. This means you're going to use more hardware and less software. These are all the things that you're going to start thinking about to make sure that you absolutely know that your, that your project is going to be successful. And that costs a lot more money, tends to be a lot bigger, and tends to be a lot less flexible. Uh, you also want to think about how compact it needs to be. When we go to a full-blown event, we may bring a half ton of gear uh, and cover three or four different uh, six-foot tables uh, with, uh, with um, different tools that allow us to make sure that everything's going to work. Uh, we also have systems that we can fit into a roll-on uh, case uh, that we can put into the overhead in a, uh, in, in a average flight. So the question is, is really you have to decide how compact does it need to be, and that will change a lot about how you actually capture these uh, these events. And uh, what features do you need? So um, do you need these, uh, do you need to have lower thirds? Do you need graphics? Do you need uh, replay uh, icons? Do you, you know, these are all things that you need to think about. Do you need to be able to actively mix or remix the audio or video? Uh, some of the stuff, if, if you don't need those things, you don't want to actually have to buy and build for those. Um, but if you do, you want to think about that as you start building out your system. Now, you can use software. So software is, is one option. Uh, you can use a software-only solution. Uh, the pros are it's a little bit less expensive, typically. You know, the software itself might be $500 or $1,000, but it's a lot less expensive than buying lots and lots of hardware. It also tends to be more flexible. You know, when you want to add graphics or playback or, or um, mix in different computers and so on and so forth, a lot of the software solutions tend to be a little bit more uh, flexible as far as letting you do that quickly and easily. Uh, there tends to be more features. Again, like the flexibility, you're able to add um, you know, lots of cool graphics and, and uh, digital sets and all kinds of other things that might be a little bit more difficult uh, in your hardware solutions. The cons you know, it tends to be a little less stable. Uh, with hardware, this, these tend to be very low-level operating systems that tend to crash very rarely. Uh, with software, you know, it's a computer, <laughs> so and your entire system is running through it, and uh, so sometimes that can be a little less stable, and also tends to be a little less standard. Uh, when you're using hardware, a lot of times your video quality, uh, your video coming out, for instance, if you have 720p coming in, you're going to have 720p 5994 going out. With a software solution, it's you know might be somewhere between 56 and 60 frames a second, uh, or, or or something like that, and so or or 28 to 30 30 frames a second. It's it's not precise. Uh, this makes it harder if you want to have your archives used by broadcast later. So it's something you have to kind of think about. Some of your software examples that you can think about here is Wirecast. It also happens to be the one that we use uh, the most. Um, there's also Boinks TV. Uh, Boinks TV does not have an encoder, uh, but it does have a, an editing system that you can actually use. Um, and it's a, you know it's a different interface. You definitely should try both of those if you're running on a Mac. Uh, Wirecast works on the PC and the Mac. Boinks works on the Mac only. And then you have VidBlaster. And VidBlaster uh, has a lot of different options uh, that are available. It's PC only, so it's slightly different. And we haven't used it that much, though. I do know a variety of people that do use it and seem to love it, uh, but we don't have a lot of uh, direct experience with it so far.